number one, this um Moisey Keen um backlash is happening, right? So um if you're not familiar, um Moisey Keen is a young Juventus striker. I'm pretty sure he's of Ivorian, Ivory Coast um, descendant, but um, he represents um, Italy. He, re he recently had his made his debut for the, the national team, the senior squad. I think he scored in his debut too. Um, the person event is generally seen as like a, a new, like young, hot prospect. Everyone's talking about him. He's somebody that a lot of people have a lot of high hopes for. But i got to be honest, when I first saw him play for Italy, my, the first thing that did strike my head was like, oh, I'm surprised I haven't heard of this guy, right? Because I watch quite a lot of football. And secondly... Um, I was always like, I was also like, oh, I'm surprised I haven't heard anything that's concerning um, racial abuse. And that's a bad, that's a really sad thing for me to think about. But unfortunately, in Italy, um, racial abuse doesn't seem to have the same kind of stigma that it does maybe in the UK or other parts of Europe. It seems as if some Italian fans or some Italian supporters or people within the football industry there, they see racial abuse as just another end of the stick when it comes to winding up players, right? When they're whistling, when they're jeering, they say things about your family, things that, you know, sometimes can um, cross the line. I think some Italian supporters, in their warped thinking, have this idea that monkey noises, throwing bananas, or whatever it may be, or just jeering at, um, excessively when a black player touches the ball. Some, some fans are a little bit more savvy. They don't do monkey noises, but they, they scream and whistle excessively when someone touches the ball, right? That happens to be black. Um, they just see that as part and parcel of what they do. So I was surprised when I didn't hear anything concerning Mo Moses Keane. But then I thought, you know what? Maybe I, in my naive brain, I thought maybe um, it's, we, we've got to a better place now. The Italians have now basically seen that, you know, he's one of theirs. Essentially, he is an Italian. Um, it might not be um, advantageous for them to kind of be um, directing racial abuse to him, especially if he's going to play for the national team and they want him to score loads of goals. So... I thought maybe they kind of had, you know, they would be like, oh, I thought maybe my walk thinking, you know, I honestly thought, I thought maybe they would continue um, directing racial abuse at people who weren't Italian and just leave their own alone. That's what I thought in my head. And now, of course, I was um, uh, this, I was absolutely wrong because unfortunately this episode happened the other day where um, it's um, Juventus were facing Calgary. And I guess... For the most part, um, from what I've been reading online, Calgary is the one place where a lot of players do get a lot of racial abuse. I think I read somewhere that's, uh, that's, that was maybe one of the places where Suleiman Tari got into that epic, got into that, um, I, if you remember, there was a, a the time where Suleiman Tari was really annoyed with someone was saying some racial abuse to him and he was threatening to leave the pitch and he was arguing with people on the pitch. There's a famous video of him kind of like, you know, um, scuffling with somebody near the pitch, but that's where it's supposed to be meant to happen. So I shouldn't be that surprised with this happening there, but... I thought I'd kind of talk about it and kind of play the video and see what the kind of overall uh, backlash has been regarding the whole situation. But let's get it up on here. Let's switch this around. Da, 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 da. Hold on. Stop there. So, the guys... So, um, Moji Keane's getting abuse uh, away from home at Calgary. He's getting absolute pelters from the Calgary fans. And, you know, as luck would have it, uh, or as, you know, fortune favours a bold, or uh, as um, the higher-ups would deem it, um, he, he, he's having a bit of a... He's, he's getting a dog, dog's, dog's abuse from the Calgary fans. It's 1-0, and as luck would have it, he happens to score the winning goal, or the second goal that kind of steals the victory for Juventus. And then he celebrates like this, right? And this is a, it's up here on the screen now, and if you guys aren't can't, if you're not watching it, then you'll probably hear it now in the background. He essentially celebrates in front of the Calgary fans and just stands there with his arms out wide, looking at them deadpan. Absolutely amazing celebration, in my opinion. Great, 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 great celebration. His players are trying to push him back, telling him to chill out, um, take it easy. Um, some Calgary supporters are, are telling the fans to not stop jeering him, stop racial abuse. Um, I forgot who this French player's name is. He's arguing with his manager, uh, Allegri. It's just an absolute shit show of a situation. Absolute shit show. But again, it just goes to show, right? And this kid, how old is he? 19 years old, right? 19 years old Italian. Um, getting his dog's, dog's abuse, right? Um, duh, 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 duh. So, again, I'm, I'm, just not too I'm just not too sure what the solution is for something like this. Because it seems like... It seems like Italy just doesn't get it. They're not. They just don't. They're not. Um, I wouldn't even say it's a woke thing. They just don't get it. It's just not a thing that um, it, it come. It kind of. Um, it kind of. Um, just not something they kind of resonate with. They don't actually get the, the significance of it. Or maybe they do, and that's why they do it to kind of put you off your game. But I generally think for them it's more of an issue of like um, they're trying to put you off your game, which is fucking disgusting to think that they think that's acceptable. 
right, to put you off your game to something like that. A 19 year old Italian kid who's representing his own country, wearing your colors on your chest, right? That badge on your chest, scoring goals, celebrating excessively. It just doesn't make any sense. And I just don't know what the right um, solution is for it, right? But what I do know, the right, the, what I do know for one thing is that the, the wrong solution is to come out and say what Bonucci said, right? So Bonucci um, uh, is a, you know, a defender for Juventus, you know, one of the, maybe one of the world's highly rated defenders. People think he's probably one of the best out there. Um, he comes out and says the following because, you know, Bonucci thinks, you know, he has all the answers. Uh, Benucci Keen, let me see what the actual quote was so I can, no, I don't want to not, not quote him, misquote him, sorry. Um, so essentially, um, um, Leonardo Bucci, I, f I think Benucci came out because I think that particular game he was celebrating his 250th appearance, right? But essentially he comes out and says the following, which I think is like, a, uh, it kind of represents exactly the kind of idiosity, id, 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 idiosity you'd see from most, um, uh, fans in Italy when it comes to this, right? Uh, where is it? Blah, 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 blah. Where are you here? Yeah, so um, here's this quote from Bellucci, right? He comes after the game is finished. And this is an article from uh, Sports Bible, right? So it says the following. Let me get it up here. Da, 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 da. Bellucci was one of the players who came over to Keane, pulling him away as he stood for celebrating in front of the Calgary Ultras with his arms outstretched. Okay, so it was Calgary Ultras that I was saying. So it wasn't the entire stadium, but still, you know, absolute scumbags. And the Ultras are the ones that kind of turn up to your house and kind of, you know, shout things as you're sleeping and shit and demand meetings of you outside your front door. It's fucking bizarre behavior. Anyway, um, in his post-match interview, the Juventus centre-back who opened the scoring for the match was critical of his teammates' actions, right? Imagine, you're the black player, 19 years old, Playing for Juventus, you represent your country, it, which happens to be Italy. Um, you're getting dogs abuse from the Calgary fans. They turn into racial abuse. You score the winning goal, the two, the, the second goal to kind of kill the game in front of the Calgary fans. You celebrate, but just opening your arms at stretches like, now what? Now what? Yeah, you just look at them deadpan. And then your fellow teammate, um, the leader of your team, says in a, in a post-match press conference, he says the following. Instead of, you know, um, uh, uh, abolishing the Calgary fans and saying what they were doing was disgusting, he says the following. Key knows that when he scores a goal, he has to focus on celebrating with his teammates. He knows he could have done something differently too. That's just, this is like akin to Trump, right? When he, when um, the whole um, Antifa and whatever thing happened and the, and the guy drove his car into the crowd, ended up killing somebody, right? He's like, oh, there's, there's, there's bad people on both sides, both sides, right? What the fuck are you talking about? Um, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't admonish um, white supremacy. It's kind of a similar sort of statement. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's only one right answer here, right? And it's just the easy one. It's the lowest hanging fruit. Um, there were racist jeers after the goal. Uh, Blaze heard it and was angered. I think the blame is 50-50. Blaze Matuti heard it. 50-50, like, what the fuck are you talking about? So we're antagonizing these people now. We're making them say racist shit. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because Moise shouldn't have done that. And the uh, curver should not have reacted that way. We are professionals. We have to set the example and not provoke anyone. Like, Benucci, fuck you. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Not provoke anyone. So... This is akin to like him saying, imagine you're Robinho, right? Robinho playing for Sao Paulo, right? Back in the day when you said, is this Sao Paulo or Santos? Whatever. Where Robinho was like, you know, one million stepovers, um, doing fucking Rabonas, right? Do you know what I mean? Like just absolutely taking the piss out of players, right? There was a theory in Brazil, it happens a lot even still now, where if you do that too often, you embarrass a the player, they'll kick you, right? They'll kick you, they'll smash you, they'll, I don't know, they'll just push you up, you know, they'll push you up the fucking pitch. They'll be violent, right? Don't embarrass me on TV. No problem. But, you wouldn't expect them if you wouldn't expect if you nut somebody, if you nut make them, right, flick the ball over the head, for them to then suddenly start calling you, um, right, to start referring to you in racial slurs, right, in order to kind of get back at you. That's not the way you go, right? When somebody, um, when you're having an argument with somebody and the first thing they go towards is a racial slur, that indicates that some, this person, there's, some, there's something not quite right going on in their melon, right? When they, the first thing they run to is a racial slur, there's nothing, you're not quite right there in the head. So for him to decide that, you know, with all this stuff happening, the first thing the fans should go to is like, well, 50-50, you know, you don't provoke the, the fans. I scored the goal and I celebrate. How am I provoking them when they were doing those racist chants before I scored the goal? How is that a provo provocation? Like, get the fuck out of here. Um, if anything, if I was Mosey Keen, I would have scored the goal, walked to the middle of the pitch and then walked off the pitch. Game over. I'm done. I'm over it. That's what I would have done. Scored the winning goal, walked to the pitch and walked off the pitch and just had my middle fingers up to the crowd. Like, just like that, Jamie, just... Ah, that would have been excellent. Score a goal, celebrate like that, walk back to the center circle, kick off and then walk off the pitch. Done. 
Um, since um, he made those comments, remarks, many have supported the fact that Keane stood up for racist supporters, including Raheem Sterling and Mario Bellatelli, while many slammed Benucci's post-match conference. And of course, um, Sterling came out and said, the blame is 50-50, but it's uh, Benucci started laughing. All you can do now is laugh. At Benucci, and then the other one, 24 hours after his outburst, the Italian defender has not issued a statement seeking to clarify. 24 hours, I want to clarify my feelings. Oh, yeah, you want to clarify them, you fucking prick. Yesterday, I was interviewed right after the game, and I was, it doesn't matter after the game, just say the right thing. Imagine you being in the stadium. We're fans, right? We see it from TV. Imagine being in the stadium and hearing monkey chants, right? Um, and it's only directed that your fellow teammate happens to be black and he's 19 years old. So you're the, you're the senior, st- so you're the senior. A statesman in your in your team you are the leader you probably have your arm around him you're probably giving him advice on how to conduct himself in this game. you can you kind of have a you kind of have a connection with this kid right because he's a young dude who came up from the from the squad i think maybe from the youth team and you and you're kind of seeking to kind of you know help him out and then you hear that what the crowd is saying you should be more angry than we are because that's your teammate that's your guy that's your soldier that's one of your people that you die for on the football pitch and yet you come out and say that and now for 24 24 hours now all of a sudden everything is clear Oh, football players shouldn't ever talk really for the most part. Most of them anyway. There's nothing going on in that head, isn't it? Yesterday I was interviewed right after the end of the game and my words have been clearly misunderstood. No, they weren't misunderstood. You said what you said, you fucking prick. Oh, probably because I was too hasty in the way I expressed my thoughts. Hours and years wouldn't be enough to talk about a sub- subject. Yeah, they wouldn't. But in that interview, the easiest thing to say, the Calgary fans were way out of line. I don't, I don't, I don't support any kind of racial abuse, and I stand with my teammate Mosey Keane. Done. Like you don't have to go that far. We don't, we don't need a fucking TED talk. We don't need you to fucking be Martin Luther King. We don't need that. Just you know, that was abhorrent. What the Calgary fans did was disgusting. I hope the officials are watching. I hope this punishment has been made. Uh, Mosey Keane um, cursed himself in the best way possible. He answered it. He silenced the crowd. I'm standing with the, my teammate. Whatever. Just a simple statement, and then he comes out. Oh, fit, blame him for 50 50 on either side. Fuck you. Hours and years will be enough. It's made me so angry. It's so stupid. Uh, abuses are not acceptable at all this. And then that, he's got... Is, and look at the picture he posts of, of him and Keane on his Instagram. He doesn't post a picture of him pulling him away from the fucking crowd. Like, oh, stop doing that. He posts a picture of him and him at the, at the fucking international thing. Like, fuck off. In the aftermath, the events manager, Allegri, said that he, he should... There should be a lifetime ban handed down to the fans. He scored another goal and did it better in the second half, whereas we got more or less everything wrong in the first half. I didn't hear anything from the stands as I was focused on the game. I love him because, man... Listen, I didn't hear anything. It was a classic us thing. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. Ask Billy Quetta when that... Um, um, that was crazy. Ask Billy Quetta with the whole um, Kepa and Sari thing. What happened? I, I didn't see it. You're the captain. You didn't see it. You're standing right there. You play right back. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're standing right there. I didn't see nothing. Okay. I didn't hear it. I didn't see it in the stands. I was focused on the game. Imagine being that focused that you can't hear what the chance on the statement is. It's fucking bullshit. You need a great intelligence to deal with these situations. It should not go to provoke people. What? That, of course, does not mean that idiots in the crowd. Like, what does that even mean, provoke? Like, what is this provocation about? How is he provoking anyone? Well, by doing skills and playing well. As always in life, there are idiots who do stupid things and ruin for everyone. I don't think anything about it at all times. I, I don't think anything talk. I don't think talking about it at all, all the time helps. What? I don't think halting play helps because not everyone said him did that. It doesn't matter if not. If you're, if you're, if if there's people in the crowd that are stupid enough to go in the stadium and subject players to racial abuse, the game shouldn't continue. Black players just walk off the pitch until it's dealt with properly. If they have to play behind closed doors, if the, the, the people have to get banned, because what that means is that when that keep ha- when that keeps happening, the good fans are going to get annoyed and they're going to get pissed because they're getting punished. Then they're going to police the stands. When some idiot starts making monkey noises, someone behind him is going to slap him back in the head like, "Oh, don't do that, you fucking dickhead!" Do you know what I mean? Because they're going to ban us again, right? They're going to police themselves, but it's going to take black players walking off the pitch and taking a stand for it. It doesn't matter if it inconveniences you and it stops the game and you have to forfeit it. I don't care. Right, you're not going to be in a stand and hear. If you have, have you been to a football game before, have you heard? Have do you know what it sounds like? People are chanting things that in the stand. It's ridiculous how much it puts you off your game. Like, let alone playing Sunday league. Imagine what it must be like playing in a stadium full of thirty thousand plus people, and half of them don't like you. Half of them want you dead because you play for another side, and then add the racial element to it. It's not nice, mate. Um, thoughts. it's just like what the fuck is Allegri talking about? It's just yeah. Anyway, anyway. Um, crazy situation again. Um, I 
uh, what do you call it? Respect to Moses Keane, being 19 years old and having to deal with that in Italy must be a horrible. It must be already horrible as it is being in Italy and being black and probably hanging around with loads of white players and maybe even having an Italian girlfriend or whatever it may be. It must be absolutely, it must be an old space. Like, it's like when I went to, it's like when I went to the Czech Republic. Like, it was a nice place, don't get me wrong, but that's the, you know, you know when you forget you're black? I guess because you're so like, you know, you just have such a, we just, we just have so, we have it so well, we have it so cushy sometimes in the UK. I think that certain parts of England where you go to some, some areas that are maybe a lot more, um, you know, uh, they have a, they have a, maybe a, a whiter majority and you go there and then you get reminded of your skin color because everyone's kind of looking at you weird, right? Um, but for the most part, living in, you know, the main part, you know, the East, living in East London and hanging around maybe South London. You don't necessarily know what your skin color is, right? You just you're just a dude. No one really gives a shit what you what color you are. Everyone's trying to just get by and do their own thing. But then you go to other countries and you're reminded of just what you look like, right? Um, or just how other people perceive you. And that's the same thing I felt when I went to Czech Republic. I was like, fuck, man. Imagine living here. People were staring at me the entire time. Like, imagine again, it could be for whatever reason, it could fool somebody, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Give you a reason, whatever it may be. But for the most part, they were just staring at me. Right, everyone was walking around. I was getting stared. There's loads of tourists in Prague, especially people go there all the time to go see the clock and go hang out and have cheap food and drink cheap beer. And I was the only one getting stared at. And it reminded me, like Jesus Christ, imagine this being your life every day. Of course, I'm sure if I lived there, it wouldn't be as bad because they'd get to know you. They'd understand. Okay, that's the black dude that lives around the corner. They wouldn't be so weird. They wouldn't be so freaked out about you. But it still kind of hit me, like fuck, man, it must be shit living here, isn't it? And I, I guess the same thing living in Italy, for the most part, if you're a black dude or, you know, it must be just a constant kind of reminder of just you're not Italian enough, right? Like when you, when you it's like, maybe, you know, Andy Murray, I think he, he says the same thing when he says like, um, when he wins is British, when he loses is Scottish, right? That kind of idea, like you're never quite good enough for them. Um, I guess for Andy Murray, it's beneficial because, you know, at least you have white skin, you know, at least you can kind of, you know, look the part. Maybe when you start talking, people can tell straight away you're Scottish, but yeah. Annoying and, and annoying and frustrating that this is happening still in 2019, especially for a player that represents Italy, especially for somebody that's not as it's you'd I dare to say it, right, that you'd kinda understand if it was Balotelli, right? He's maybe a little bit more of a you know, um Marmite character. He maybe is a little bit more of a provocateur. He maybe is a bit more of a wind up merchant. Even then, I still think it's unacceptable because he plays for your fucking national team. He scores goals. He's an entertaining player, and then it's just, it's, just it's, it's fucking ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And I'm, I'm I hope they get punished. I'm, they probably won't because you know the fucking um, uh, the Calgary chairman came out and said some fucking mad shit as well. Uh, what did he say? This is a statement that Calgary chairman came out and say. It is from uh, Football Italia. Got it here. The Calgary chairman says the following. What did he say? Um, uh. Giolini, self-righteous about Keane, right? Calgary President Tomas, Tommaso Giolini claims Mousy Keane abuse was not racist, as if um, if uh, Federico Bernadetti had celebrated like that, he would have been treated exactly the same way. No, he wouldn't have, because Bened um, um, Bernadetti is white, mate. So if he was celebrated in front of the Calgary fans the same way, they would have probably said his mum's a whore. They would have probably said something about something about his wife, his kids. That's what they would have said. The standard kind of football insult kind of, you know, um, uh, rotation. But they wouldn't have called him a monkey. They wouldn't have called him a gorilla. They wouldn't have made monkey noises. They wouldn't have done that because he's not black, you absolute spanner. Um, the 2 new home defeat to Juventus was oversized by ugly seas after Keane's goal at 85th minute. He acted by jeers and his name aimed in direction throughout the match by celebrating the arms that were stretching from the ultras. This sparked even louder and ever a clearly racist chance from that section of the crowd, which was spread to the teammates Blaise Matudian and Alexandra. If Benedetti had celebrated like that, he would have been treated exactly the same. Um, the same way by others, by our fans. If Diabala had done that, no, he wouldn't because Diabala's white. Again, you prick. Yeah, um, Diabala had the same drama queen antics after the goal uh, that Matuidi did. He would have been treated exactly the same way. Drama queen, like what? I don't want people to start bending, being self righteous about it because I heard that already. Whereas Juventus players came to me afterwards and confessed Keane was wrong to celebrate that way. Who said that? Who? Fucking Benucci. Absolute donut. We cannot go around calling the entire Calgary crowd offensive things. No, we can't. But those ultras are racist. Can we say that? Is that right? If the ultras are racist who happen to be in your in your in your in your stadium and I'm a black player, I can walk off because those ultras represent your fans. So that's it. 
right? We can't go around and say, duh, duh, duh. if they were racist jeers, then our fans got it wrong. But it happened because of the celebration. No, it didn't happen before the celebration, you prick. That's why he celebrated like that. Huh? Um, and it wouldn't have happened even if the goal scorer had a different colour. All I heard were whistles and jeers. But if you with if we were yeah, picked up the few assets racist chainsaws, then of course these were wrong. But no need to be so fragile about it and cast shadow over the entire Calgary fan base. Like, what the fuck is he saying, man? And this is Blaze Matudi too, getting racist abuse, I'm assuming, right? And happy with the abuse he's getting. Love it. Very, very cool and calm. And... Got his goal. Well, there's several people inside the stadium. And he's a, Jesus like Christ. Look at Allegri there with Matuidi. Jesus Christ. Absolutely disgusting. 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 Look at this. And what what's the referee gonna do? What's the referee doing? What's the referee gonna do? What's he gonna do? What's the referee gonna do? It's like it's absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. It's disgusting, isn't it? Cross the public address system. But yeah, anyway, um, Mosey Keen answered in the best way possible. He scored the winning goal and celebrated like that. Well done, brother. Well done. Well done, man. But yeah, um, Backwards Nation doing backward stuff. I shouldn't be that surprised anyway. I guess, you know, moving on in.